Hello guys! Welcome to the 11th part of the SAS and Advanced CSS course. Today we are going to make our page responsive. We are going to learn how to use media queries and how to adjust our page to fit on every device. So here you can see the final version of the page. And first thing that I want to show you is a nice tool for creating responsive designs. It is already implemented in Google Chrome browser and you can use it by jumping into the dev tools by clicking F12 and here you've got the device icon and as you can see we've got now these two bars to adjust our page. And you can see that on every device dimensions it looks perfect. These cards are aligning next to each other in a column this grid image gallery looks perfect, these icons at the bottom, the fonts are smaller, you can here select a special device that you want to see the page, how it looks like on this device, let's say for example a Galaxy S5 and it looks absolutely amazing, there's no issue with elements overlapping each other or something like that. So let's now jump to writing the media queries to make this page look like that. Let's get started. The first thing that we want to do is to add a new file to our SAS folder and it will be specially for our media queries. So I will call it like that and import it in the mine.scss file. Here we can add import the media queries. And now inside of this folder I want to show you a concept of using mixins. What is a mixin? A mixin is a special part of code that is reusable in other classes, in other elements of CSS. So let's say for example that you want to add a mixin for a special div and inside of it this div will al always have a background color of red, it will have a font size of 25 pixels, that's just an example and maybe a color of text will be white. And also a border, one pixel solid red. If you want to use this element to a div1 and for example div2, we can include our mixing that is called special div. And that's it. We've got this code copied in this place. So if it's compiled to CSS file, it will look exactly like that. And basically you can, for example, add here, add include special div and special div. And maybe in the second div, you want to have a padding of 25 RAM. And here you want to have another padding, let's say for example, 10 RAM. So basically it is the base usage of an mixin. But we've also got another usage, more advanced one. Let's say for example that we want to have the padding inside of the mixing. So right here we will set the padding and you want to set it to a certain value that will be specified in these classes. So let's say for example dollar $value, it will be our variable. And this mixing will take this, vari this variable as a parameter. So here we'll call these brackets and inside of here will be value. Maybe rename it to padding value. It will be more clear to understand. And copy this and put inside of here. And when we are calling the special div, we want to set this padding value. So in the first one it will be 25 RAM. And in the second one, it will be 10 RAM. We can delete this code here. And when we compile it, you can see right here in this compiled style as CSS that this code were put inside of our div1 and div2. So this value were converted exactly in this place. With this knowledge, we can now create our media queries functionality. Let me delete this code that we have recently created and now create another mixin that will be called 
responsive and will take a breakpoint as a value as a parameter breakpoint and inside of this mixin we want to use a special sas statement that is just an if it works exactly the same like every if in a programming language so if the breakpoint is equal to our first value that we are going to pass here inside the mixing mixing call it will be phone so if the breakpoint is equal to phone we want to have the media query only on screen because we want, don't want to use the media queries on our printing devices or something like that we want when we for example are printing our page we want to only have it on a real screen and the max width is set to 600 pixels because it is a standard maximal width of a phone we want to put the content inside here so basically when someone is calling or responsive mixing with the include responsive I will here write it right down responsive with an for example phone inside of it what he puts inside these brackets for example a padding set or an padding for example five pixels and color set to white or something like that it will be placed here when the where the add content is called so let me copy this code that we've got here three more times because we want to have four breakpoints here i missed the semicolon so we need to have it and the second breakpoint will be called tab port the third one will be a tabland tab stands for a tablet and a portrait mode on or a or an landscape mode and here we've got a big desktop for a big screen device here we want to have 900 pixels here 1400 and here we want to have 1800 but we want to use a minimal width what does it mean basically it depends on the approach that we have chosen the mobile first or the desktop first in the mobile first approach we are starting with the small screen and we are growing to a big big for example desktop screen or something like that so we will have here min width each time the device grows in our case we have chosen the desktop first and we are adjusting the elements to smaller devices so whenever this element shrinks we are choosing the max width i can explain you here this when we are choosing here responsive we've got our page as here in the desktop first approach and here are our breakpoints the max width 1400 900 and 600 and whenever the device shrinks we are jumping into the next next breakpoint and as you can see here when we've got even smaller device we are using the styles from this breakpoint 900 and from this 1400 and even when it's much more smaller we are using from these three elements and it is exactly how the desktop first approach works in the mobiles approach we will be like that when we've got here the minimal width so whenever our page grows to a bigger device we are jumping into the minimal width media query so let's get started with implementing our media queries into each of our section because as you can see here our page didn't look quite good this text is overlapping elements it doesn't convert to smaller device so let's quickly fix it let's get started in our base that scss file we have here created our font size to 62.5 percent it's because 10 pixels equal to one rem and the standard device browser font size is 16 pixels so we need to divide 10 by 16 
pixels and is exactly 62.5%. And now we can see the magic behind using the RAM as our main parameter. It is very, very useful with using media queries. And here we can add our first media query, the responsive, and put here our parameter that will be tab land. And inside of it, we'll a little bit make our font smaller. Maybe let's say that we want to have nine pixels instead of 10. So nine pixels equal to one RAM and nine divided by 16. It's exactly 56.25%. So I will here use this value. And whenever we are shrinking our page to a smaller device, the font will automatically make smaller and all of our elements that we have assigned here to RAMs will be automatically smaller. You will see in a second. The next media query, let me just copy it because it will look nearly the same. The second one will be tab portrait and the third one will be phone. I've already calculated the values and in tab port I want to have 8 pixels. So it will be 50%. You can divide 8 by 16 and it will be of course 50%. And in the phone device, I want to have seven pixels equal to one RAM. And it will be 43.75%. What is very important is the sequence of calling the include function, of calling the media queries. It's because whenever you call the bigger screen query, the lower screen needs to be, be after that to override this value. So if we, for example, call it in this sequence, when the tab port is higher than the tab land, the value wouldn't be used because it will be overwritten in this place. So you need to remember it when you are creating media queries. Always the sequence is very important, starting from the bigger to the smaller in desktop first approach. And at the end, we can call our last include. So ah, copying it will be faster. It will be a big desktop. And here the font size will be set to 12 RAM because on higher desktops will be, will be more visible. So 12 pixels to equal to one RAM and it will be 75%. As, as, and as you can see, this method of creating media queries is very useful. I saw it in another tutorial that I've learned there and I'm using it all the time. It is very easy, very easy to create, very easy to maintain. I really, really like this method. And now we can immediately see the results, but I have forgotten about one small thing. In the main.scss file, you need to import the media queries at the beginning of this file because the media queries will be used in all of the other files. So it needs to be imported and as the first one. And now if we save everything, we'll see what we've got. And as you can see, we have here these media queries, these breakpoints on the top bar. And whenever we shrink a little bit our screen, watch carefully, this button makes became smaller, the phones became smaller, the cards, and even more here on the breakpoint. Yep, exactly everything has become smaller. It's because we have created our elements with RAMs and we have changed the font size on each breakpoint. We can see it exactly here. Yeah, it is this breakpoint here exactly in these cards, everything became smaller and also on the bigger screen, it becomes bigger, it grows. And is, it is a very, very faster way to making our page responsive with using the font size and the RAM and our media queries. 
So thanks for watching and see you in the next part of this course.